Hey guys, so we're in Fort Lauderdale, staying in a Marriott with walking distance to the port. We're going on our first Disney cruise on the Disney Dream. We are excited and nervous. Here's hoping it was worth the price we paid. Okay, so we're walking through the parking garage right now. It's huge. There are just lines and lines of people's luggage all along the wall. So we're gonna go drop ours off and see what's next. Okay, so the attendant put our bags in a cart that looks kind of like this and we were directed around the corner. There were signs there that show like check-in times and where you're supposed to wait out in the parking garage, which is super odd. Okay, so I'm just walking around the corner and I'm seeing all these people in like corrals just sitting here. And I'm wondering what the heck is going on because this is not like our normal cruises. Okay guys, I didn't get any video of this, but we finally got our time called for check-in, which was late. We went and checked in with our passports and then we went into a completely empty waiting room. What the heck is with that? Why didn't they just have everybody wait inside and check in over on the side of the waiting room instead of having everyone wait in the parking garage? Okay guys, we're finally getting on the ship. I'm super excited. I've seen in YouTube videos before that they, when you get into the ship, they like call your party name as you're going into the main like atrium area and I'm pretty excited for that. Okay, we checked in with the attendant. There's a really cute Mickey and Minnie on the sides of the entrance to the ship, but because they let us in so late, they're not calling names they're just trying to get people in the ship so i am super disappointed in that on the bright side though the atrium is beautiful and it's all decorated for christmas you guys this is a super cute captain donald statue even though he's not the captain of the ship and the christmas tree in here is beautiful i'm really excited for the christmas lighting ceremony and you guys the gingerbread house in here is so freaking cool it even has its own little fireplace and christmas tree Hey guys, rent muster, I don't think I can take any videos, so you're gonna get a few pictures, but it's definitely old school muster where you actually have to get together in lines. They show you how to put on your life jacket and you can't just like watch it on the TV like you can in most of the ships that we've been on recently. Okay, muster is over and we are starving, but the buffet is already closed um, because I think it closes at like two. So we're just watching the ship pull out and in a minute we're gonna head over to the sailing away party and see how that is. And there's the bridge that we saw from our room last night. These are super cool for us because we don't have these where we're from. Okay, so the Sailing Away party is really busy. Um, we're really excited for the shows because we've heard that the shows on Disney ships are above and beyond normal cruise ships. I'm not gonna show the whole show in this video, but if you wanna see it, I'll put a card up in the corner. Okay, time to check out the room. This little guy is called a fish extender. This is where they put our keys in this little pouch. And this is also where people will hang like a little bag or something. Cause I know a lot of people on Disney cruises will like pixie dust each other if they have something hanging out on the little fish extender. This is room 8001 on the Disney Dream okay on the right here we've got a bathroom it's got a full tub here with the shower that comes off some Disney um, body wash and conditioner and stuff and then here's the little sink and that is the bathroom. And we've got closets here. That's just a little closet there. And then second, this is a larger closet here with the safe. Okay. And this is a queen bed. And then this sofa turns into a bed here. Got some shelving. Let's see what's in the drawers. Would be the dryer. And then two more. There's information. And then here's the little fridge. There. Extra chair. And then this is kind of nice. It's got like curtains that you can close here. Bedside tables here. Oh, look at the Mickeys on that lamp. Bedside tables with more drawers. And then this is the magic porthole that shows you outside, even though it's not an actual porthole. More about this in a minute. And there is the bed turned down. And that is the entire room. It looks like they do have 220 volts and a 110 down there.
as well. Okay guys, these portholes are actually really cool. During the day, they show you what's outside even though it's not an actual porthole, but at night it becomes magical. Watch this. So there's no sound, but these little scenes come down every once in a while and I don't know how to tell like when they're gonna come or not, but there's a bunch of different ones and they've been super fun to watch. So there are a few things that Disney has done that we miss from old time cruising like before COVID. One of them is chocolates on the pillow at night. So the attendant came in this evening while we were at dinner and turned down our bed and left chocolates on our pillow and these really cute towel animals that he has done. So this is the one from today and I will do a little montage of the other ones from the cruise. Now we're going to look at the kids clubs on the ship starting with the nursery. This one is not complimentary but the other kids clubs are. This is kind of cool <laughs> but behind those closed doors there are cribs for the babies to sleep in. It's not very big but uh, considering the age range and that you have to pay for it it's probably sufficient. So this kids club is the one for three to ten year olds. This is where Disney put all of their imagination and all of their effort in. It's super cool, super big. It takes up like half of one deck. And there is tons of stuff for kids to do in here and tons to see. If you want to see the entire every inch of the kids club, I will put a card in the corner to that video. I also wouldn't be at all surprised if they have character meet and greets on this stage. If you ask me, the older kids on this cruise ship got jet. I mean, to be honest, this isn't nearly as cool as the Oceaneers Club. I mean, where's the like fly the Millennium Falcon and where's all the take you into another world stuff that I've come to expect from Disney? To be fair, they do have like drinks and snacks for the kids in here, lots of activities going on and stuff. I mean, look at that wall of windows. That's really super cool. It's just missing that Disney flair that I was expecting, you know? <laughs> okay, this hallway is actually pretty cool. Okay, the teens club is a lot bigger than the other kids club and they have a private deck all to themselves. These pods aren't bad either. They basically have a place for you to charge your phone and just relax. I wish I had these extra plugs in my stateroom. Wow, this looks like a massive game room. This is so cool. So that's basically the whole teens club plus the pool deck. If you want to see that whole video, I will have it up in the corner. So this is the adults only deck. It's on two levels. You've got this bottom level with like some pools and like a private lounge that sells coffee but also has complimentary snacks in there. And back here there is a hot tub up right up next to the window so you can see out while you're in the hot tub. And then up the stairs there is another deck with a kind of weird looking pool on it. You guys, this is a cool deck. This is where all like the seating is for the adults only area. There's a bar up here and then they've got this light bulb looking things. Two of them are just like covered spaces and then this middle one is an interesting pool. It's basically a cold pool but then it's got like rain shower coming down over the top on the bulb looking. There is lots of covered seating up here staring off the back of the ship. I did lie about something though. There is no bar up here that is actually down below by the other swimming pools um, downstairs. So this other side of this deck looks the same as the first side we walked in. Something that was interesting for us on this cruise though was that they don't make you check out the deck towels on this ship whereas like on a lot of the carnival ships we've been on they make you um, write down your stateroom number and name before you can take a towel. Hey guys we found the spa. We're gonna go take a look at the thermal suite. Just as an FYI, in case you did not know, everything in this spa costs extra. It is not included in the fare for members. Everything in this room is so relaxing. The sound, the smells, it's just like a whole vibe. So each one of these shower things has like different smells and different types of mist, golden hot and stuff that comes out of it. So they're pretty neat. These rooms are different wet and dry saunas. This one is a dry sauna and it actually has a window in it that I wasn't expecting. These other ones are going to be a little hard to see in because they are like steam saunas, but we'll give it a try. And in the back here we have the hot beds, they're like hot rock beds, and then two hot tubs with an awesome view. It is too bad you can't hear the music out here though because that would make this experience on this back deck better. Okay, we found the fitness center and it's actually really big. There's a lot of good offerings in here and it's so nice to be able to exercise and look outside of a big window. Holy cow, there are a ton of treadmills in here. That is amazing. I think it looks like a pretty good array of lifting equipment as well, so not a bad gym. 
We have learned an important lesson here after now being at several of the shows. You really need to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early if you want to get a spot where you can see anything. After the tree lighting party, we went to a DVC welcome event where they had free water and drinks. We don't drink alcohol, so we had this fun little drink. Talking about food, let's talk about the rest of the food on the ship. There are definitely some things on a Disney cruise that are different than they are on other cruises. One of them is the drinks. You can get soda for free. On all the other cruises we've been on, it's just lemonade and water. You have to pay extra to get soda. Most of the food that we came across is the same kind of stuff you can get on other cruise ships, like soft serve ice cream and pizza and hamburgers and there's a buffet, it's all pretty normal. Here are the hand washing stations as you go into the, up to the buffet. Like I said before, it is a little weird that this buffet is only open from like 11 to 2-ish. On most cruise ships that we've been on, it seems like the buffet, at least part of the buffet, is open all of the time. So it's odd that this buffet is only open for a few hours in the day. Oh, you guys, look at this mural. It looks really cool. Let me get a closer look in just a second. It's actually a mosaic, and I think it's supposed to be some sort of a coral reef, but it's not exactly Finding Nemo. There are a lot of offerings in here, not anything that I would really see that's not in like most cruise ships, except for maybe these crab legs right here. Check out this wall art. These are all of the Disney castles from all over the world, and they're actually like made out of sand. So cool. You know, of all the food I've seen on this cruise, it all seems pretty normal. Like, I haven't seen any Disney food like I would find at the parks. No Mickey-shaped stuff or, like, caramel apples or, like, you know, the normal kind of food that you see at Disneyland or Disney World. Interesting, there is a bar back here, which I don't recall seeing in other buffet areas. Usually they just have the waiters, wait staff bring you drinks if you ask for them. Looks like we're coming around the back side at the buffet area. Here's more of the same stuff that we've already seen. Well, this is something I missed recording on the way down. These clocks show what time it is at all the different Disney parks around the world. Out here on the pool deck, they also have some food options. There's like pizza and hamburgers, hot dogs. I believe this is where like the salad buffet is as well. We did notice though that the pizza on this ship is not as good as pizza that we've had on other cruise ships. And here is a quick picture of the menus here. Okay guys, dining rooms are definitely something that we need to talk about. They are different on this ship than they have been on other cruise ships we've been on. But first, this dining room is super cool. The enchanted garden theme works really well. And this Mickey statue in the middle here is so funny. Okay, back to the dining room. So there is no anytime dining on this ship. You can pick early dining or late dining. And there are three different restaurants to eat in, which you will rotate through with your dining staff. Now on other cruises we've been on, we usually choose any time dining, but we really enjoy doing it this way because we got to experience the different dining rooms and the different things they offered while still getting to know our dining staff really well and they got to know us really well. So that was really fun. There was only two of us here, so we actually did get assigned a table with other people who were super cool. He was actually a professional wrestler and we had a great time getting to know them throughout the cruise. Okay, back to the stories. You guys, look at this cute menu. Even it's decorated with the Alice in Wonderland garden. Everything we ate tonight in the Enchanted Garden was really good from the appetizers to the dessert. The best part though was definitely the ice cream sundae. Totally didn't record anything while we were eating, but here's a picture of everything we had tonight. Okay, today we're gonna be at the Royal Palace restaurant for dinner and it looks very elegant. Just from walking by and looking around a little bit, it looks very princess themed, but mostly Cinderella, especially this middle section here and the light fixture, you guys. This is so cool. It has like glass slippers coming out of it. And here's another cute little Cinderella detail I noticed on the way down. And each of the sections of the restaurant has like a little picture on it depicting different princesses. And here's all the food we ate tonight. My favorite part again was probably the ice cream sundae. Also still no like Disney specific food, but still very on par with other cruises we've had. 
Night three is Animator's Palette. You guys, I am super excited about this restaurant. I've been waiting for it the whole cruise, but it was freaking hard to find. So what I understand from our dining buddies is that this restaurant is very interactive with like the Finding Nemo characters on screens, almost like, um, oh, what's that ride? Uh, Turtle Talk with Crush. And by the way, guys, I do love the Mickey chairs. You guys, check this menu out. How cool is that? Ooh, hold on, it's starting. Hey, check out all the new and Hello, dear. Oh, I'm totally trying that again, dear. The name's Cross. Oh, I said hello, dear. Hello, Cross. Oh, hello. For the sake of time, we won't show everything, but basically Crush would go around in different sections of the dining room and interact with people sitting around there. And then in between, other Nemo characters would come and like the fish here, and they would make like shapes and you could guess what the shapes were. Here is everything we ate at Animator's Palette. Also, we heard that room service was free, so we had to give that a try as well. And other cruises we've been on, room service is only free at breakfast time. Finally, something that I recognize from the parks, it's Mickey shaped. Okay, it's just a Mickey bar, but hey, this is everything we got in room service and it was uh, just okay. I do need to mention though that the Mickey churro waffles are amazing and you have to try them. Let's check out everything we can find as far as shops go on the ship. Most of them look a lot like um, any shops you would find in any of the Disney parks. There are a few though that are more like shops that you find on other cruise ships like jewelry places and stuff like that. This is basically a big U shape of shops. So there's that Sea Treasures and Mickey's Mainsail and the rest of these are basically jewelry and sunglasses and stuff like that. Okay, so Mickey's mainsail is up there where we were before and still down here. So that is just like the big main shop. So here's a peek in the other stores that I was talking about earlier that are not Disney themed. They're just like jewelry and stuff. And this one is actually on the way to the pool deck, just in case you forgot something. Oh, and this one we just found on the way to the district. So let's talk about the district. The district is basically the area of the ship where you will find all the activities. There's a lounge there with, I think they have comedy shows in there sometimes. There's also a bar where they did trivia and another bar. They did other kinds of trivia in the back here. We went to an activity where we made little 3D like origami with for the kids. So if you're looking for an activity, it's likely in the district. There are a lot of twisty turny halls back here and entrances and exits all over the place. So um, yeah, you'll have to explore it when you come. We're going to be doing Star Wars trivia in this pub later. There is a big like lounge back here that we're looking for that has the advanced Disney trivia in it. One thing we noticed on this ship that has been different for us than normal cruises is that there's a lot of activities that we actually want to go to and do, shows we want to see, and movies that they play here on the ship. And they're actually like new release movies. These aren't like old movies. And so there's always something that we want to be doing. So there's a lot less relaxed time than we normally have when we can just ignore all of the activities going on. Okay guys, it is now time to talk about pools and water slides. I am standing behind the exit to the Aqua Duck which is the basically water roller coaster that is on this ship. So this is kind of a little hidden deck back here, but it is a little bit loud. So I'm going to try and move someplace a little bit quieter. This is where the aqueduct comes out. I'm going to take a little peek inside. By the way, if you want to see the full aqueduct ride, I will link that again up in the corner. It's obviously not running at the moment or they would have like a lifeguard down here. Here is where the aqueduct entrance is. It's just on top of the main pool deck and the lines can get a little long. They do run it first day though. So it's not a bad idea to try and get on it first day that you're on the ship. Also see this water slide to my left over here, this yellow one, it is only for kids. Adults are not allowed and it is the only other water slide on the whole ship. Let me show you something really cool though. Across from the water slide behind the big screen, there is a special family area with a very small toddler pool that is right next to the adults only area, but not like in sight of it. So I actually love this area because it's for smaller kids and their families. It's called the family deck. Here is a glimpse of that little pool I was talking about a minute ago. It's actually surprisingly quiet on this deck because it is behind the screen where they play movies and the adults only area. Well, it's just right here. 
All right, let's go check out the main pool and the Nemo splash pad. There are basically two pools here. There's a Mickey pool, a Donald pool, and then that hand slide that we saw earlier. And then across the deck underneath the TV is where the Nemo splash pad is. So Nemo's Reef is definitely geared more towards babies, though I believe anyone is allowed in here. Definitely adults are allowed in here as well. I'm pretty sure anyone's allowed in here. Anyway, it does have a little tiny slide and just a little few water features. And here is the little water slide that is on the other side. Okay guys, I randomly found the sports deck while I was looking at Rat the Ratatouille restaurant and a few other things. I did get a video of that, but it is in a later section of this video. Okay, so this golf course is actually based on Goofy cartoons, the how to ski or fish Goofy cartoons. This is how to golf. There is a complete video of this as well up in the corner if you want to see that. Just past the mini golf, there is a basketball court, and that is pretty much everything that's on this board stack. I already mentioned this before, but there are a lot of cool things to do on this ship. One of them is this little become a detective game. So what you basically do in this detective game is you go all over the ship and you scan your card at different interactive art pieces and they basically open up and you get to play a little game. This would be a great thing to do with kids, especially on like sea days, for instance. There are several different versions of the game, so you don't do the same case each time and more than one detective can play. We played one whole round of this while we were on the ship and if you want to see that whole video, it is up in the corner. Now, apart from the detective game, some of the picture frames are just interactive. When you walk by them, they do magical things because it's Disney and it's a magical ship. Other fun things they had going on around the ship was this guy playing the piano often, and then they also had carolers out in the atrium. Special holiday show on the ship, and if you guessed it, you can see the full show in the link in the corner. They popped fresh popcorn and had snacks before each show and every movie. And if you brought your refillable popcorn bucket, you could refill it for only $1.50. And I found this cute hidden Mickey in the carpet. These mosaics on either side of the atrium were cool too. One of them is Cinderella and the other one is Sleeping Beauty. Did I mention that I'm also a little bit obsessed with the artwork that's up and down the stairs? Oh, and it looks like I found the place where you can look at the pictures you take on your cruise and probably buy them. You can't take videos during the live performances and obviously not during the movies either, but here is what the theater looks like. Do you remember when I mentioned way back at the beginning of this video about how people pixie dust each other with the fish extenders? This is what I'm talking about. This is a whole wall of things that you can take as Christmas gifts, believe it or not. Pirate night seemed to be a big deal for everybody on the ship. A lot of people even had like really fancy pirate costumes. We were given in our staterooms a Mickey pirate bandana that we could wear to dinner. And what this does is basically replace the fancy dress at night that you would see on a normal cruise ship. There are actually two pirate shows going on tonight and one of them includes fireworks. Again, I will have the full pirate video uh, in a link in the corner uh, because we do not have time for the whole thing in this video. Pirate night actually was a lot of fun. The characters came out dressed in their pirate costumes. They had a chance to take pictures with all of the characters in their pirate costumes and overall it was just a really fun night. While we're talking about characters, we actually could see characters every day that we were on the ship, just out in the atrium, meeting with people. There were princesses and other characters. You did have to wait in line to get pictures with the characters, but if that's something that you enjoy, there were lots of opportunities on the ship. And this is concierge. There's a special lounge for concierge. There's a special like adults only area for concierge. And those are concierge rooms. And here we have the laundry room. You are welcome to do your laundry in the ship, but it does cost extra. This is the Remy restaurant. And while we're looking through the restaurant, I did want to mention that there is like a little bar just outside the restaurant. And on either side of the bar, there is a private deck, one smoking and one non-smoking. You guys, I found all the theme park suites in Cabanas, which is the buffet. There is Vanellope's Sweet Shop. And this is where you can buy all of the stuff that you see in the Disney parks. I'm actually really bummed that some of this stuff doesn't come with the price of the cruise, but I guess I should have expected that.
Ooh, look, there's even gelato and hard ice cream. Mmm. There is also a Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique on the ship if that's something you enjoy. The farewell show was actually really cool. Right in the middle of it, they allowed everyone to come and take pictures with Captain Mickey and Captain Minnie and spend some time with them in between, like during the intermission of the show. And if you would like to see the whole thing, you guessed it, it'll be up in the corner. Overall, I do think the price of the Disney Cruise was worth it, but with one caveat, only if you are a Disney person. Otherwise, you can get a lot of the same stuff for a lot cheaper. If you guys enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing. It actually helps us out a lot, as well as liking and interacting with our videos. Okay, we'll catch you in the next one.